Hey guys, what's going on? It's Kodiak here, and we have a very special top 10 for you guys today. Today, we are going to be covering the top 10 add-ons every WoW player needs to know. And I say we because we have a very special guest with us today, my man, Republic. Yeah, my name is Republic. Uh, I'm one of the officers in Exiled Power, and looking forward to go over and going over some of these add-ons with you. All right, Sean, so kick us off. What's number 10? All right, so number 10, mostly in Worlds of Draenor, I focused on being the healing officer and that kind of thing. So the first thing we're going to cover is heal bot and those kinds of things. So there's kind of a plethora of these right now. Um, we got heal bot, we have voodoo, with grid, um, there's also stuff like click. So in general, just to keep healers sane and making it easier than the default raid frames, um, I highly suggest using one of these guys. I know LVUI kind of has some of this stuff in there too, but... Um, it's just kind of a personal preference. Every healer should be running something other than the default raid frames. And what do you think? Why Why is this such an advantage for players to be using something like this? Yeah, I mean, you kind of get more customization. You get more feel of it. Um, so, like, with the default raid frames, like, position can be kind of weird and things like that. So, using these custom solutions kind of gives you, like, a, a, a tailor-made raid experience. It's not, like, super crucial. That's why it's kind of starting off our list, you know. But um, it's definitely something that will help you become a better player by using it effectively, I think. And so, if you're on the fence, say, if you're looking for the, the most basic introductory one, say you're a healer that you want yeah, just a little bit better, which, which one would you go with? Um, so, again, it's all kind of personal preference um kind of thing so i started out using healbot i've used healbot since like uh i first started healing in like burning crusade you know so it's like the the ui and the graphic elements haven't changed like at all so it's very simple very easy to use um you can get pretty heavy with it so personally i would say start off with healbot um with that being said though grid offers a lot of very simplistic tools as well um voodoo is kind of giving you a best of the most worlds it's kind of in the middle of with those guys um but honestly like they're all going to give you the same functionality and things like that so i'd say pick one that suits you the best or think that you can get the most help on for example so like if you have another healer in your team that also uses heal bot maybe go to that one or if your team all uses voodoo go to that one because they can actually help you configure it and mess around with it so awesome all right, number nine, Iskar Assist, Thogar Assist, any of these assist add-ons. Um, this is kind of a cool one, guys, because what we're basically saying is there's a plethora of resources out there for you guys to look at. Um, yep. Iskar, for anybody that knows me, anybody in Exile Power knows that I <laughs> hate that boss. I think it's I a think terrible a boss. <laughs> yeah, it's a terrible boss. And what the community did was they created uh, an add-on, uh, basically a small little module that said, Hey, let's let's help our raiders. Let's help the whole community um, beat this boss. And so, what we're saying is, be on the lookout for these really awesome small package add-ons that are going to help you defeat bosses that are tough. Um, we said Iskar already. Thogar had another one. Hans and Franz had another one. And they're all very simple things that are just going to give you the edge. And that is so important in a raid environment, guys. You want yep. the edge. Yeah, and, like, I can't read it or not. I mean, like, these have been around for a long time, right? We had weak ores, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff before. This is just kind of a more packaged version. Um, let's say you have a raider on your team that's like, I don't like using weak ores. It's not my thing. I'd rather not. Um, using these add-ons instead sometimes simplifies that experience a little bit. Um, so it kind of helps you get that next step up even if your raid team isn't quite on the weak or a hype train so to speak because i mean you'll see some weak or encounter specific ones as well so kind of look for those two but we just wanted to call out these because they have been popping up without wad so probably the same will happen in legion as well so absolutely all right so the next thing we're coming here is number eight this is Quartz. This is one of my personal favorite add-ons. I've used this for quite some time. Um, and again, this is another one of those components that's part of LVUI and similar UI packages. But if you're one of those people that kind of like to take a bigger customization role in your UI, like me, uh, Quartz is something you need to have. Um, it, this replaces your default casting bar. So um, instead of just giving you just a normal bar that goes from left to right, with Quartz you can track, uh, track your lag timing and stuff like that. You can track your global cooldown as well, which is really helpful in like melee classes and things like that where it's like um, you don't want to get too far ahead of yourself pressing buttons before GCD comes back off. So something like Quartz is really easy to set up um, for your personal uh, casting bar. Something else that a lot of people don't take advantage of with their casting bar is like, okay, I'm focused on my casting bar and where it is, what it looks like. 
that's great. Something else that Quartz does, it lets you control other casting bars around you, um, including your target, your focus, your pet, anything like that as well. The best part of that is they actually have a special module in there that will track any targets around you. So let's say you're doing Archimon, for example, and there's a specific ad that you need to interrupt, but you don't even know that it's out to see that it's interruptible. Quartz actually gives you a cast bar that you can display of all ads around you that have interruptible casts. So it's like easy to pick and choose, like, oh, something you need to interrupt is happening right now, even if you're not targeting that mob. So that's, that's so why, cool. I didn't even yeah, know that existed. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. Learning something new every day. <laughs> there you go. And that's cool. So, I mean, Sean, the, the two that you've talked about, Healbot, Voodoo, Grid, and then Quartz now, um, they're for the players that may not have played around with their UI too much. And now what, yeah. what we're basically trying to tell you guys is that you don't know these great tools are out there until you try them. For sure. You know, yep. and, and they're so easy. They're so easy to set up, especially Quartz, especially, you know, the Grid and whatnot. A lot of this stuff comes right out of the box, ready to yep. go. Um, and you guys do not understand how valuable it is to play until you have it. Yep. It's And, yeah, like I said, and it's really easy to go to, like, curse.com, their add-ons page for World of Warcraft. There's new stuff there going all the time, lots of updates. Just go check stuff out. See what pops to you and try it out. Um, I know if you're on Windows, it's pretty easy to install add-ons via their curse client they have. Um, if you're rating on a Mac, I'm sorry, first of all, because it's – not very updated and things like that, but um, you can use all these add-ons with Mac as well. It's just you kind of have to do a download, drag and drop, put it in your add-ons folder kind of thing. But um, yeah, there's lots of things out there, guys. Nice. All right, number seven, SCADA, in parentheses, not recount. And Sean's yes. going to talk about that because I don't have as much hatred for recount. But well, I will I mean, talk about SCADA. Yeah. <laughs> I will talk about SCADA. Go so, so as a raid leader, Sean and I are constantly – um, we're constantly talking with each other. We're constantly looking at numbers. Um, yep. And in one of our other videos, you'll see it in our top 10 tools, you'll see that we're talking a lot about logs and um, what that information can give you as a raider and as a raid leader or whatnot. But when I want a snapshot of what's going on, when I want to be in-game, I don't want to pull my head away. I need to see what's going on very quickly, and I need a quick breakdown of it. I'm going to SCADA. So for you guys who don't know, SCADA is a damage meter, a healing meter. It tracks a lot of different aspects of the game, mm -hmm. um, and it does a really good job of doing that. But that is an essential tool as long as you're looking at it from a purely subjective and objective standpoint. You're looking at it saying, okay, I want to know how much damage this person is dealing. I want to know how much healing this person is doing. That is not the end-all be-all. I want you guys to get that through your heads. That is not the end-all be-all. And you'll find a lot of people out there that say, I'm doing this much damage. I'm so much better than you because all I'm doing is damage or I'm all I'm doing is healing. That is not the case. And you will see a lot of the professionals, a lot of the, the top tier guys will say that is totally bullshit. Right? Yep. No, for sure. It's like it's it's not numbers that kill a boss at the end of the day. It's how you handle the mechanics. Numbers should be like the easiest part of a boss is being able to pull numbers, right? That's just an afterthought. That's a guaranteed if you're a mythic raider or any raider. You know, it's like the, the, the way you kill a boss is to handle the mechanics properly, not pull numbers. So these aren't, again, the this is what you look at to see who's doing well and who's not doing well. It can kind of guide in where improvements can be. It's kind of similar with like logging stuff. Um, and the reason why we kind of say, let's use SCADA and probably not the other options, um, with my personal experience with, uh, you know, not only like helping lead a raid, but also participate in raids, Recount has seen terrible drop-offs and updates and lots of bugs with their uh, algorithms and where they pull their data. SCADA is just typically better updated, better handled. It looks better in my opinion. And the coolest thing that I like about SCADA is you can actually have multiple windows. So as like a, a healing officer, I like to look at the healing meters and the damage meters. So with SCADA, you can have separate windows. You can also track things like interrupts, all that good stuff. So I think it's better to start with SCADA. I think you'll just get better results out of it. Um, I know like, I think it was in like Panda's uh, expansion, there was like a huge bug with recount that like screwed everything up. Um, and that's when I kind of started switching over. So I suggest you do the same if you're currently using recount. It's just generally a better uh, solution in my opinion. So, yeah. And like they said, they track a lot of really cool stuff more than just mm -hmm. damage and healing. Um, once you, you know, install it, throw it in a corner and just play around with it a little bit, mm -hmm. see what you like to track. Um, obviously, the two big ones are damage done and healing done. But there's 
like Sean said, there's interrupts, there's mitigation at, uh, modules, dispels. To it, there's dispels, a lot yep. of really good tools. And if you break it down even further, you can click on things and you can really see a full mm -hmm. breakdown of what's going on. And that's a really great snapshot. It's a really great tool and add-on to have in the game. Yep. And again, we want to reiterate that nothing is going to be perfect. So the way that these uh, programs all work is all kind of, it's a little different in how they calculate things. So it is completely normal for any, like Scada, Weak Aura, you know, what, whatever uh, meters that you're using in game, they're going to show different results than logging does. It, it just happens. Um, there are some, you know, range issues that the logs can see, but Scada can't see. So kind of keep that in mind when you're looking at this. It's not 100% accurate all the time, but it gives you a really good picture of where you're sitting um, and where your rate is sitting as a whole. So. All right, so we're going to go ahead and move into our number six. This is LVI and similar UI components. So as a raider, we've kind of started touching along this a little bit. We're going to hit it pretty hard right now. Um, the default UI is, generally speaking, not very good for a raiding scenario, in most players' opinion. You can put the default UI if you like. It's totally your choice. In a lot of players' minds, Customizing your UI lets you see more of the raid. Um, the, the default UI can kind of clutter up your screen a little bit. So using LUI or like Domino's, Bartender, this kind of stuff to move your bars around gets you a better picture of the raid encounter. This is going to be a really, really crucial part in Legion 2 because they're actually, if you haven't seen it yet, they're reducing the max camera distance in Legion. Which, which means yeah, uh, which means you'll be closer to your character than you are right now in Wad. Um, so what that really means is you need to really conserve space because you'll be closer, more clutter around you, that kind of thing. Especially if you're a melee, um, you just kind of get the clutter away so you can actually see like the ads around the boss and different mechanics and stuff like that. So using LUI, using Dominos can help you. Generally speaking, people like to center their UI so you can actually see like um, you're always looking at the center of your screen as opposed to, oh, my bar is down here at the bottom left of my screen. So I'm going to look at that while I'm doing my rotation. But, oh, there's a mechanic way off over here that I missed because I was staring at a, the wrong part of my screen. Right. So. Right. And it's the control. It's the control that's that Absolutely. most mythic raiders and even heroic raiders, normal raiders, PvPers. We want the control of um, what we're seeing and what we're doing. And one of the things that you may, you guys may not, you know, consci consciously think about is that there's a lot of artwork that clutters up your screen just in the, mm -hmm. the default UI. And Blizzard has done an okay job of tweaking over the years, um, but there's still a lot of stuff on your screen. And what LVUI does, and for those of you who don't know, LVUI is ready to go right out of the box. It yep. gives you a nice little startup wizard. You click a few buttons, and boom, <laughs> you are off to the races. But what it allows you to do is it really allows you to get full control over your screen. And like Sean was saying, you can move things to the center, you can move things off to the side, you can get rid of a lot of elements. Um, yep. And that's really, really, really important especially if you want that kind of full screen look you want to be able to see your corners you want to be able to see your quote unquote peripherals in game yep. um, most of us use it i think lvi is one of the best ones out there but if you want um, different kinds of controls you know do, uh, sean said dominoes bartender i don't even know what's updated anymore yeah shout out uniframes is another one mm -hmm. sexy map is one that's pretty popular i think at the end of the day no matter what you do the best piece of advice that cody and i can give you because this has happened several times within our team, usually right before raid starts, back up your add-ons. We're going to say this a couple more times before <laughs> the, we're done here, but like, you can go to your add-ons folder, go to your, you want to copy your add-ons, WGF interface, just copy it all and back it up somewhere. Because if LUI decides it wants to explode for some reason, or let's say you even switch computers for whatever reason, you want to have a copy of that so you don't have to spend you know, the time to recreate it, how you configured it. Um, very, very important piece before you start you know, mixing this up. Oh, yeah, and I'm guilty, so. guilty as charged. There's been multiple times where I log on and say, well, guys, I can't raid because uh, everything Oops. blew up. <laughs> yeah, give so, me like uh, right. 30 minutes to exactly. figure out what happened. And then you're scrambling so. and then you're – it's just it's just a not, not a good situation. So that's yep. some free advice for you guys. Yep. There you go. All right, we're moving on. Number five, RC Loot Council. Okay, so this one – clearly subjective um if your guild yep. is not a loot council guild you can just fast forward on but 
wait a second, because we're going to tell you guys why this is such a cool add-on. Um, so what this does, we decided a little while ago that we were going to switch to a loot council system. Um, if you watched one of our other top 10 videos, you'll know that in my opinion, I think loot is evil. I hate loot. I think it is yeah. the, the main problem of a lot of arguments and raids. So we decided to take that aspect out of it and said, look, we elected these four officers. We're going to do a loot council. Um, we're going to be as impartial as possible. What the loot council system does is it allows us to push gear to the players that will help the guild progress the furthest. But we yeah. won't get into that too much. What RC Loot Council does is it gives a nice pop-up window, shows all of the, the items that dropped off a boss, and then gives a lot of cool tools. It shows what the player currently has equipped it. It shows, um, it adds a section for notes. It allows the player to say need, greed, minor upgrade, all of these really important um, things that raid leaders need to know about at a, at a glance, right? Yep. And it puts in a really convenient window. So we can go through loot especially when legion drops this is huge when expansions first come out because there's a lot of gear that's getting upgraded really quickly so when we're gonna you know five ten people are gonna need a piece of gear i'm gonna be able to see what they have equipped i'm gonna be able to see a note from them that says oh this is a major upgrade this is my best in slot things like that and that's really important to keep that line of communication open um, yeah and we recently just switched back to this so i'm very excited to try this out for the start of an expansion because we we yep. switched to it in the middle of it it was okay we switched to something else and now we're going back to RC Loot Council. Yeah, I want to add a little caveat too because right now we're still under the impression that Master Loot is still going to be the default go-to for progression rating. Um, they have made considerable changes to the way personal loot works. So personal loot might actually end up being a better solution for us. We're not quite sure yet. We're kind of have to play it by ear. They're adding some things like being able to trade loot that's been dropped from personal loot, that kind of stuff. So we'll see how that plays into it. But regardless... If you're on the leading team with your raid, have a conversation about this. You want to make sure that you're doing everything you can to be as transparent as possible with your team on how you're distributing loot and making sure that the community agrees with how you're doing it. Otherwise, you're just going to cause crazy drama issues that don't need to exist. That's so. right. All right, so we're going to go ahead and move on to number four. This is Ask Mr. Robot and Pawn. Um, these are two add-ons and kind of tools as well. They're kind of a little bit of a combination. So um, kind of going along with, like, put your theorycraft on, theorycraft hat on for a second. Um, let's, say, on. let's say you really want to get nitty-gritty with your class, and you don't just want to look at a best-in-slot list posted on Icy Veins. You want to go the next step further. My, my initial suggestion is to find those theory crafting websites. Usually we have them linked on our website. Um, try to keep that list up to date. Um, they have... They will always post their stat weights for the class. This is like intellect is valued at uh, one point or like 100%. Um, let's say crit is valued at 75%, this kind of stuff. And what Pawn and Ask Mr. Robot allow you to do is import those stat weights for your class, import the loot that you're currently wearing, and then figure out what the best combination of that is to validate those stat weights. So this is just one of those tools that... Not necessarily you need to use, but if you want to push yourself to the next level more than just saying, oh, I know this piece is better, I think, but just to be sure, let's check. Um, this is going to make sure, like, help you, oh, is this an upgrade, or should I equip this instead of that, or what happens if I shift over to mastery instead? What does that look like? Um, so using both of these tools will help you do that. Um, I will say Pawn is, like, a free add-on that you can use. Ask Mr. Robot uses their... Um, uh, website for part of this as well as their add-on. Uh, the Ask Mr. Robot part involves a subscription to get you a lot of really cool features if you haven't checked it out. You can actually import your gear from the game into their online website and save it and do all kinds of changes. So um, kind of see which one you like, but I definitely suggest looking at Pawn and Ask Mr. Robot. So. And I will say I'm very silent in this one because my advice to you guys is if you don't want to put on your theory crafting helmet, I'm actually going to take my hat off and I'm going to give it to Sean <laughs> because my advice is to find a friend that's into this. Find Absolutely. somebody, and Sean mentioned the theory crafting websites because there are people that are so good at this, and Sean is one of them. Um, I rely on him. And the, the raid and the guild relies on him to say, what the hell am I doing wrong? Am I gearing wrong? Yeah. Am I playing wrong? Because there are people that really like the number crunching stuff. And if you're one of them, then check out those add-ons. If you're not one of them, yep. find theory crafters, find friends that are really into it. Because they will save you guys 
headache after headache after headache. And they're great tools um, when they're when they're used by the right person. Yeah, and this is something that can really set you apart too. Like if you're, let's say you're not in a leadership role, but you want to be in your guild, this will absolutely set you apart. If you're doing this research for your team, trying to maximize your class and helping out others in the process, your leaders are going to notice. Or let's say you are currently a leader, but you want to keep your team more focused, this is how you do that. This is one of the many ways you can do that. So, Absolutely. And speaking of raid team, we're going to move on to number three, Exorcist Raid Tools. Yep. Now, full disclosure, we love this thing in our guild. Um, this, the, the power is endless with this add-on. And honestly, I don't think we've even scratched the surface. I know we use a couple modules here and there, but the power of this add-on is so good. And as the yep. title suggests, it is designed for raiders. It is a full toolkit of raid tools um, it has an awesome notes feature which we're mm -hmm. shifting to away from angry assignments into the exorcist notes feature which allows you to keep that line of communication open with your raid including um, assist type modules like we were talking about at number nine yep. um, but it's all in one nice package tied with a nice little bow and damn do they do a good job with it absolutely yep it's just, it's just such an invaluable tool, right? It's very similar to getting those custom weak auras for an encounter or that kind of thing. And it also helps you plan for a raid, too, depending on the encounter and things like that. So, like, uh, Cormrock and HFC is a great example of this. Um, beforehand on the Cormrock fight, I think actually uh, Chromog in Blackrock did the same similar thing. Um, you actually plan out where your raid will go during this certain phase. And as soon as that phase pops up, everyone gets an arrow telling them where to go which is super helpful for mechanics. It's very, very similar to how DPM kind of functions on that level and things like that. Um, but another thing, it's like, this is crazy. It's, it's not really like Exorcist Raid tools, right? So it's, it's multiple things. Um, another thing that they offer, which is super, super important for any leader on the team, um, tanks and I, almost everyone really, you can actually track raid cooldowns with Exorcist Raid tools. One of their options is you can actually display, um, like let's say you have three druids, and you can actually check the box that says, I want to show Trank. And essentially it builds like a little weak order module that shows you the cooldown of those three raid members' Trank. Um, it auto-picks them, it finds them if they're in the raid or whatever. Very, very useful to use. And then you can see, like, like as a healing officer, oh, we have a Trank available, we can use that here. Or let's say you're a tank. You can only show the external cooldowns, like, oh, I need um, Hand of Sacrifice right now. So, And they know what's off cooldown because they can see it. This is super, super important. Um, can't stress this enough. And this will continue to be important in Legion. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, I cannot so. say enough good things about this add-on. They've Absolutely. done such a killer job of keeping this thing updated, keeping it fresh with all of the bosses, all the important features and tools. Mm -hmm. um, for me, what Sean was just talking about is, is extremely important because I'm looking at a snapshot of everybody in the guild that can provide some benefit to the team. Um, even if you're not in a leadership role, you can have that up on your screen. Say you're seeing that there's something that the, the raid officers or leaders are missing, and you just say, hey, we're not using Vigilance, or hey, we're not using um, yep. you know, Vampiric Embrace and no matter how minor these things may be if you just provide them the tool provide your team the tool, you're setting yourself up for success um, and Absolutely. one last cool little feature that I love um, I know you can do it in weak auras but uh, is the battle res monitor nice yes. little box yep. that says you have a battle res available you have two battle reses available and then if you don't it gives you a timer so my eyes are constantly flitting up there, especially when we're doing some of the more challenging content when I know there are periods yep. where people are going to die. I'm looking and I'm making snap decisions about who to res or who to res in a minute or how many reses are available. And I, I mean, guys, they do so much with this add-on. Um, don't be afraid to say, all right, everybody, download this mandatory because it will save you so many yep. headaches. Yep. All right, we're going to go ahead and move into number two, and this is one of the biggies. This is Weak Auras. And we're also going to throw Tell Me One in here as well. So um, throughout World of Warcraft cycle, they've had things like Power Auras and different things like that to do tracking on your screen, essentially. Um, so that's what Weak Auras and Tell Me One currently occupy, that space of tracking cooldowns, monitoring buffs, um, debuffs on the raid, and even crazier stuff than that. Um, so this is such an invaluable tool. I think I, I really can't stress this enough um, to where it's like, it's kind of hard to, this is kind of what we were talking about earlier, you want to declutter your screen and make sure you're always focused on the center. Um, weak orders can really help you do that. So let's say um, 
uh, let's go with the Holy Paladin example, just because that's what I'm used to playing. Um, let's say I get a a proc from my uh, my weapon enchant or something like that. Instead of just like looking at my buffs and seeing that that procced, I can get a weak or that says, "Hey, you have this buff available now. You're kind of going crazy with crit, um, and you can do this with all kinds of different things." So it really helps you take control of your buffs and your cooldowns and things like that, and help you monitor it in new and effective ways. Um, it's not always visual too, because with weak or you can do things like sound alerts. So like. For instance, with my uh, crit buff on my weapon enchant, I can have like a little ding play every time my crit buff goes off. So again, that doesn't add any color to my screen, but I get a, like an audio cue that, hey, you have this crit buff active, do something about it. Um, and you can do this with all kinds of different stuff. Yeah, and this is one of those great tools that the community is really involved with. Um, yeah. If you guys are on Discord, they're already talking about stuff for Legion and how to make weak auras better. Um, a simple Google search will get you everything you need to know about your class and a specific patch. Um, I know Sean always helps me out with my weak auras. He'll give me, mm -hmm. he was just talking about audio cues. I play a Marksman Hunter right now, and every time I throw all the hunt procs, I get a big explosion sound, and I get a big graphic. And then yep. Blizzard did adopt a little bit of this. You will notice that in the default, they give you a, a, a few visuals. But mm -hmm. we're talking about control again, guys. We're talking about integrated environment. I want to have the control to see here um, all of the things that are important to me as a Raider that is going yep. to make me successful, going to make the team successful. Um, and it doesn't just stop with our class. It actually goes further to allow you to weak or encounters, encounter IDs, boss mechanics. I mean, literally... The it's possibilities yeah. are endless. Yeah. Just to give you kind of an example. So, I mean, let's take um, Tyrant, for example. Uh, if any of you guys have ever healed Tyrant on Mythic before, Tyrant, she has a mechanic that essentially puts a, a shield on a player. And they will continue to take damage until this invisible shield or whatever gets healed off. Um, but it's kind of hard to track this with all the other debuffs happening in that fight. So there's a weak or that someone made in the community, and you can just Google it and find it, that shows you the amount of uh, healing left on their bubble that you have to heal off. And it also gives you the name of the player and things like that. And these are all over the place. I mean, I think over the course of HFC as a healer, I use them for almost half of the fights. I had custom weak auras just to help me play better and help the team play better. Um, so, I mean, yeah, we really can't stress this enough. Um, and if you go ahead and check out our tools video coming soon, um, might already be up depending on when this thing goes up. Um, we're also going to cover a new website that just came out. Uh, this actually, I found this on the Week or Discord. Um, and you can probably just type in like Week or Discord to get the invite link for that. They actually are developing a new tool right now that is just, it's just a, a web interface. So you can go to, it's W-A-G-O dot I-O is the website. Um, this is essentially a big repository of a bunch of weak auras from community members. Um, like Cody was saying, I mean, there are resources all over the place for you to find weak auras and things like that. So I can't stress enough how important this is. Now, if everything that we just said kind of went, whoa, what's happening? This sounds really complicated. I don't know how to code. I don't know how to program. This is crazy. Don't worry too much. Um, weak auras really doesn't have a whole lot if you just want the basic cooldown tracking and that kind of thing, you can generally speaking make a weak order track that within five or ten minutes, depending on your familiarity with it. Mm -hmm. And there most are... likely most likely somebody has already done it. Yeah, yeah. So don't feel like you have to always make something custom. There's usually already a solution out there. But if you kind of feel the need to like say you found a custom solution weak aura, but you're really kind of scared to edit it or like mess with it um there is an alternate that i mentioned earlier this is called tell me when um this is used by a lot of people as well um if you're ever familiar with uh preach's videos on youtube he's a huge advocate of tell me when um and weak ors as well but i think he uses tell me when uh more which is kind of where i heard of it it's essentially a simpler version of weak ors in the sense that you can still do everything that weak ors can pretty much um but it's easier to use so it kind of has a much more like wow blizzard ish interface um with adding new week or, or adding new uh tracking stuff and that kind of thing so if you're kind of new to the scene and you want to get started with this i would recommend either starting with week or telling when whatever you're most comfortable with but as long as you're doing it 
that's the important thing. Yeah. So possibilities are endless, guys. You just got to explore. You got to do your Google searches. Um, yep. There are videos out there on YouTube that will show you how to make complicated things, simple things. It's an awesome tool, and it's only yep. going to get better in Legion. Absolutely. And uh, let's let's cap this one off with our number one. Uh, add-on that we think everybody should use no matter what the situation and i think yes. you guys probably know this uh, it's the most popularly downloaded add-on on curse and it is deadly boss mods uh, and or big wigs um, as raiders we know that uh, deadly boss mods has been around for a long time and yes. it is still invaluable i cannot stress it enough mm -hmm. how much success we owe to this add-on because what it does for you guys who may not have downloaded it um is it basically breaks down um, the mechanics in each fight and it'll give you auditory cues it'll give you visual cues it'll give you um it'll kind of break groups apart it'll do display things it'll do all sorts of really great things that'll bring your attention to a specific mechanic um, phase of an encounter and and there's not that much to say about it because everybody uses it and it's so yeah. essential yeah. and um, pull timers we can't pull forget timers. pull mm -hmm. timers wouldn't exist without dbm i mean you could type it in the chat i guess but we, i don't know i mean take it like, for granted it seems like rating without dbm is just just weird you know like there's so much that it does like in the background and what you see while you're rating it's like how do people play these bosses without dbm and right. this kind of stuff it's it's a lot more difficult is the end answer yeah. now you can kind of build parts of dbm with weak ores and things like that which again goes back to what we were saying earlier is like if the community's already built it and it works just use that you know like if it already exists it's there. You don't have to recreate it yourself and go through that pain and struggle. So using DBM, and, they, and they're really, really fast with updating this thing. They are always on beta and alpha, PTR, testing whatever they can to make sure that as soon as the patch hits or very, very soon after, they have a release to cover that boss, right. which is awesome. One of the most supported add-ons out there. Yeah. Now, if you're really crazy and you don't want to use DBM, that's fine. You can use big wigs as not well. Fine. It's not fine. Um, I think we have a few people in the raid that use big wigs or maybe yeah, used to. I don't to. talk to them. Um, it's, it's, it's there, you know. Um, there's also another add-on that kind of does similar things. It's called GTFO. Um, you probably know what that means. Uh, it's like an add-on that just yells at you when you're standing in fire or similar things. Also very, very helpful. But, I mean, at the end of the day, it's the same thing that we've been saying you want to make sure what you're seeing on your screen is valuable and it's easy to see, easy to understand, and that's what DBM does in one package. Um, but however you're doing it, getting these is it's crucial. That's this is how you you know you raid. If you want to be a raider, you need to have DBM installed just flat out. Yep. So. And I mean, there's so many. You can get away with never opening the actual settings for DBM, yeah, yeah, and, sure. or you could go into it. You know, especially if you're into LUI and, and into fully customizing your UI, you can move things around. You can make things bigger, smaller. Um, yeah. you, they actually have a ton of features per boss that you can instantiate or you could take away. It's very customizable. But if you just again another add-on right out of the box is good to go. Yep. But it's essential. We've been using it for expansion after expansion. I know the support's going to be there in the next expansion. We're all still going to yep. use it because it's that big of a tool. Um, Absolutely. I, it, I, you just can't you can't forget about it. All right. Yep. So that was it. Top 10 add-ons. I feel like those were some really good ones, Sean. Yeah, and, and let's not forget, there are so many more that we couldn't mention here. So if you ever are more curious about what you can push your game to do more, just check out, uh, I think it's like mods.curse.com, or just Google like Curse WoW add-ons. There is a ton for you to explore. Please go check out anything you can to help you play better as a raider. Yeah, and while you guys are out there, uh, make sure to check out our website, exilepower.com. Uh, we are working on making that thing fresh, making that thing sexy. Uh, Absolutely. Sean is doing all the legwork. I'm just just taking all the glory for it um and we're going to keep creating content for you guys so make sure yep. to subscribe to our youtube channel sean thank you for helping me out today yep no problem and uh yeah look out for the next video guys take care all right, see you